was to figure out who they were, what did they do, why did they come here? And I learned that these were the, the free-thinking, out-of-the-box, faithful people who came here to do something that, that in their minds had not been tried successfully for 3,000 years since the ancient Hebrew Republic under the leadership of Moses. I mean, you know, they, they felt that the ancient Hebrews were given the divine constitution in the Torah, and they wanted to import those principles of liberty and justice to the new world. So uh, our pilgrim forefathers and foremothers left us what I call the, the, the secret sauce recipe for how to build a free and just society under the word of God. And they left it for us in the form of this monument, which the real one is 81 feet tall. It's 180 tons of solid granite. It's the largest granite monument in America, and it's invisible. Nobody knows it's there. It's hidden behind a forest of trees in Plymouth, Massachusetts today, and it spells out all the principles that you and I love. And this is a replica of it so that people can see it. Um, you've probably never heard of it. It's called the National Monument to the Forefathers, and I, I, I hired the Weta Workshop, who does all the sculpting oh, wow. yeah, yeah. things, to capture all of the detail. And uh, if I can, I'd love yeah, yeah, to please. just explain it to you. Please, I would love that. Okay. All right. This is awesome. I can't, I, I can't wait to explain this to you. So history tells us that our forefathers and foremothers believed this, that to have a, a functioning society that was free, you had to start with, what's this right here? Faith. And faith is uh, the largest of all of these figures, and she's pointing to heaven. And she's got a book in her hand. It happens to be the Bible. That was the Geneva Bible brought over by the pilgrims on the Mayflower. Her feet are on a rock, and that's Pil uh, a Plymouth Rock. And uh, she has a star on her forehead representing wisdom. Uh, and so they would reason from the scriptures uh, to create their society. Now check this out. Faith is then expressed in these four key ways. N number one, it's first expressed through morality. And morality is uh, depicted as, as a woman here holding the Ten Commandments in her left hand and uh, the scroll of Revelation in her right hand. And that represents both the Old and the New Testament. But they believed that morality was not something that could be imposed externally by a king or a tyrant. So on the left, it says evangelist. And they believed that, 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 that God's word needed to, be, needed to be proclaimed so that there was a transformation of the heart, that the grace of God would change you on the inside so then you loved the standard on the outside. Once you had good morality, then you could make good laws in your nation. And there's the judge, he's sitting on his, uh, his chair, and he's holding the book of law, and his book is directly beneath the book in faith's hand, which is the scriptures, signifying that man's laws must line up under God's laws, or they're not good laws. And on his right, it's justice, on his left is mercy. So there had to be a balance between justice and mercy. Once you have civility in your, in your society, then you can educate your kids and there's a, a mother there or, a, or a, a parent who's wearing the wreath of victory holding the book of knowledge and on her right it goes right back to the book of proverbs uh, there's the youth because they believe that if you train up your child in the way they should go when they're old and here's the old man with a, with a long white beard he's holding a globe and a bible uh, when he's old he'll not depart from it and his name is wisdom so he has a biblical worldview once you have that to the second and third generation they believe you come up with the result, which is liberty. And that was both liberty internally from sin, pride, arrogance, selfishness, and uh, liberty externally from tyrants and bad government. And uh, if you look, he's, the chains on his ankles and his wrists are broken. Tyranny has been overthrown. And his wife is here next to him. Her name is Peace, and she's holding a basket full of good things for her friends, her family, and her community. So this was the secret sauce recipe, and it's there for everybody to see. And, and these are the kinds of values that I love and I want to point people to. When was this built? This was actually completed in 1859, I believe. It took 50 years to build, and it was actually interrupted by a little thing called the Civil War. And uh, it was interesting because Abraham Lincoln was one of the very first contributors to the building of this monument. Hmm. And uh, there was a, an architect, Hammett Billings, uh, who actually did the drawings for Uncle Tom's Cabin. And it was, it was, it was an amazing time uh, that this was built. And uh, it is still the largest granite monument in America, and it's invisible. Nobody's ever heard of it. And you can't find it unless you know, unless I tell you where to go.